Hello, everybody. Cryptic Girl here, playing a little bit of Seven Days to Die, and I've been playing this game for many, many hours. Like, 9,750 hours to be exact. And along the way, I've learned some tips and tricks that can help improve the quality of life in general, and maybe even help you to survive. Now, the first tip I'd like to show you guys is a stone axe stun. Now we all know the stone axe isn't the best weapon for killing zombies, but if you do find yourself attacked by a sneaky Zed, just turn around, pop him in the head. I'm just gonna be over here and pretend like I don't see them coming. This one's broken. That one's also open. There's quite a few of them, so, uh, yeah, observe. Oh, she got me there. Next tip I'd like to show you is the Wonders of Shift. Now most of us already know about using the Shift key to quickly transfer items to and from the storage containers, but there are a number of other useful purposes for the Shift key as well. First in your crafting menu. You click on an item, by default you can craft one, but if you hold shift and click on the item, it'll automatically set it to the maximum number of the item that you can craft. Like so. If I were to go to the wood frame block, I shift click on it, and I can craft 40 frames with the wood that I have. But I'm not going to do that right now. <laughs> the shift key also works well at the trader. So when you go into the trader menu and you click on whatever item you want to buy, you can hold down shift. Hold down shift and click on it to uh, select a whole stack whether or not you actually have the money for it. It also works when you're selling items. So I have a little, little bit of old cash here. So if I just um, shift click on it, it automatically does the whole stack. And I'll just hit W to sell. So this is useful when you want to sell many items at once. Shift. Shift. Shift, click. Yeah. Another menu where the shift menu comes in handy is the shape menu. You hold down R and you select your shapes. And normally you would just uh, click on the whatever shape you want and then hit uh, escape to back out of the menu, right? But if you hold the shift key when you select your shape, the menu closes by itself, automatically. So it just saves you a key press. Just click on it. Pick whichever one you want. Or you can hold shift, click on it. There's your new shape. Menu is closed. It helps a lot. Every little key press you can avoid will save a little bit of time in building your base. 
Next, I want to show you an easy way to turn your vehicle around. So what you want to do is turn the camera so that it faces your character while sitting on the vehicle and then press W or forward on the controller. Like so. And pay attention to which way the wheel is facing. Just tilt your camera whichever direction you want the vehicle to turn around in. Kind of useful for getting out of tight spots. Aside from actually picking up your vehicle. E. In the early game, reloading your weapons is really slow and your movement speed is decreased. This isn't good when there's a zombie or a horde coming at you. During the reload animation, switch to any other slot in your tool belt to cancel the reload animation. I'll try it while moving. Just keep in mind that you will still need to reload your weapon when you re-equip it. Ta-da! And another bonus tip, an easy way to unload your weapon is to just hit the modify button. See? Ready, aim! Whoops. <laughs> now, we all know that vultures are a pain in the ass in Seven Days to Die. So I'm going to show you a few of my favorite strategies to deal with them. Method 1, wait for the vulture to dive at you and then hit it with a well-timed power swing with your melee weapon. Like your club. And depending on the quality of your club, your pummel peat level, and the, your difficulty setting, results may vary. But in my experience, and my settings... Whoa. That did the trick. <clears throat> Method 2. Blade weapons. Blade weapons are guaranteed to make your target bleed. And since vultures have very low health, they have a high chance of bleeding out. So, there you have it. Yeah, I still got lacerated and bled out and everything else, so, uh... Or method three, if you absolutely swarm with those things, a good pistol will do the trick. Again, wait for them to dive at you. Oh, there's one. Wait for them to dive at you and give them a well-timed shot. There's one more vulture sitting up there, so... Since I don't have a pistol on me, I'll just uh, use this AK. There you go. 
now. The equip function has existed forever, but who actually uses it? With the addiction of action hotkeys back in Office 16, equipping items in your tool belt is easier than ever. Here's how to make good use of the equip hotkey. When you have a shiny new item you want to equip and your tool belt is full, equip the tool belt item you want to replace. Then open your inventory and click on the item you want to put in your tool belt. Press the equip action hotkey W by default and the item will be in your tool belt. Now I've got this shiny new pistol. I have the blunderbuss in my hand, so I want to replace the blunderbuss with a pistol. So I'll click on the pistol, W for, e for equip, and voila! My pistol is equipped. This comes in handy if I need to switch items in a hurry during a uh, battle with the horde. I have to turn on debug menu for a moment. I'm gonna spawn some. I actually don't think I have enough ammo. Not for the pistol. She moved before. Twitch action. Oh, it's for the uh. Got a bunch of Arlene's here! Quick equip! I don't want them to get too close! See, the blunderbuss is not a very effective weapon, so... Quick! You cut the pistol! This will speed up, take care of this last one. And then this guy here. Yeah, somebody dropped a loot bag somewhere. Yay, a stone axe. <clears throat> like before, if you want to equip your... You want to replace your level 1 stone axe with the level 2 one, just click on the new stone axe. And then hit W to equip. Does not come in handy. Again, I'll switch out my level one club for level two. Ta-da! Next, I'm going to show you an easy way to get paint. Many looted apparel items will have a die attached to them. See, look at that. That one does not for some reason, but these two do. Another plain one. Alright, I guess I'll take it all. Now all you have to do is uh, remove the dies. Again, I'm using the action hotkey to hit the modify. There you go. Then all you do is scrap the dies. Let's 
So yeah, just loot a good uh, savage country shop or the uh, Zach's Laundry and get plenty of clothes. Scrap the dyes you find. Zombies aren't happy with me. Some doors, such as garage doors and vault doors, are slow to open. A quicker way to get through is to double tap on the use door key, which is E by default. The opening animation will cancel and then the door will start to close. Just run through as soon as you tap the buttons. So this garage door here, I'm just going to double tap E and dash through. Very useful if you have something chasing you. You don't have to turn around and close the door behind you. Just double tap, run through. So, that concludes my tips and tricks for 7 Days to Die. I hope you'll find these useful and life in the zombie apocalypse will become a little bit easier. Thank you so much for watching everyone. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me at CryptGirl1981 on Twitch TV for live content. And as always, no matter what happens in your story, only you can give it a happy ending. <laughs>